evening, everybody. Thanks very much for being here. Nice and sharp, on time. It's eight o'clock if you're in Ireland. I don't know if you're in some other part of the world that might be a different time, but it's eight o'clock and you're all here. So thank you so much. My name is Vincent Kelly. You probably saw my ad on the little things that we put around on the various different channels. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to give you this data, which I believe is actually going to help you in your life. Okay. Now, um, I want to say hello to everybody who's on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. And though I don't have you beside me, uh, any of your comments will be sent in to me through this portal I have here. This is the portal, the secret portal, which is Zoom. So for everybody on Zoom, I want to say hello to all of you. I've got you here in front of me. And you've, uh, throughout the webinar, if you have any questions or any comments or you want to give any examples, I might ask you for some examples, you can just pop them into the comments box. So, hello to Trez. Hi, Trez. And by the way, my pronunciation of certain names, forgive me if I mis mispronounce your name because I think I'm about to mispronounce a few names. Mauruna, and thanks for having your camera on, Trez. Appreciate it. Anybody else, you can put your cameras on if you like. You don't have to. I love it when people have their cameras on so I can actually see that there are live people and there's not just robots signing in. I don't know if it's actually a real person or not. So, ah, there you are. Thank you so much. Uh, Rosalie, good to have you. Thank you very much for sticking on the camera. Much appreciated. Okay, uh, hi, Sabrina. Uh, who else do we have? And by the way, we've got Eric as the host this evening. So if you have any questions tonight that you don't want to direct to me, send them directly to Eric who's hosting tonight. Hi, Ray. Good evening to you. Uh, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, much appreciated. Kirsty. Hi, Kirsty. Thank you so much for being here. Um, now I'm about to mispronounce a name, I'm sure. Demant. Demante. <laughs> okay. My apologies if I mispronounced it, but I hope I got it in some way right. Good to have you. And Marie, thank you very much. Lovely picture of a, of a, bunch of flowers um, I don't know what they are I don't know what they are they could be those uh, fly eating flowers for all I know I've, I'm terrible at botany so uh, I don't know what they are okay and Paul thanks a million for joining us very much appreciated good to have you on board all right folks so listen first as I'm going to tell you this out front is that this is a webinar it's not a lecture with just me talking so I'm just going to give you some key data that's going to help you to have a look at life a bit differently. And I'm going to ask you for some examples. So there'll be a few exercises throughout the webinar where you'll, you'll have to kind of think about something. Now, you don't have to participate. Um, I'll be asking you to pop them into the chat. You don't have to, but it would be fantastic if you could. Just pop them in there so I can read your examples. So the first exercise of the evening is to tell me where you are logging in from. This is the first thing I'd like to find out where everybody is. I'm going to start off. My name is Vincent. I'm from Kildare, which is in the Southeast Midlands, but I'm right now I'm in Dublin. So there you go. I'm starting it off. So if you don't mind, pop into the chat. Where are you from? Where are you logging in from? Uh, that would be great because I just, I need to know. I need to know if somebody's from the North Pole. I need to know that they're not just down the road. Okay. Who have we got? Um, hi. Uh, Demant, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, you're from Dublin, great, great to have you. Um, Demant, Tres from Dublin, fantastic. Ray from Cork, hiya. Rosie from Cork, wonderful. Ed, uh, Kirst, uh, Kirsty from Edinburgh, wonderful. Thank you, Kirsty, for joining us from Edinburgh. Marie from Dublin, and Marana from Roscommon, beautiful. Played football in Roscommon. I think I got sent to the sideline halfway through the match, but I, I got there. I got into Roscommon for a football match. Okay, and uh, Sabrina from Clare. Great to have you, Sabrina. Yeah, I was down there a couple of years ago. Beautiful neck of the woods down there. Uh, Paul from Dublin. Hi, Paul. And Rosalie from Dublin. Fantastic. Okay, folks, with everybody in there, if I miss any comments, I usually come back around and um, I, I'll, I'll pick them up, okay? So I usually try to read up all the comments as they're coming in. So if you want to say anything, please feel free to pop it into the chat, okay? Now, uh, to introduce the webinar, this is, um, I told you my name already. 
And this particular webinar is based on this book called Dianetics. Dia means true, netics means the mind. And I'll tell you a little bit later about a little course that I have which goes into this a bit more. Uh, it's a three workshop course. I want to tell you at the end. Uh, so that's what it is, Dianetics. And it means through the mind. And it was written by this gentleman. His name is L. Ron Hubbard. L stands for Lafayette. L. Ron Hubbard. And uh, it was written many, many years ago. Now the same author also uh, wrote and researched and uh, published another subject called Scientology, which basically means knowing how to know things. Study of knowledge. And it's more about uh, application of improvement principles in life, okay? But there are two separate subjects. Tonight, we're mainly going to be concentrating on this particular book because it came before the other subject. But if you have any connection, uh, you want to find out any connection between the two, any questions at all, just pop them there uh, in the message to Eric. He'll be able to answer any of your questions, okay? So this is what the webinar is going to be based on. And um, let's get started. Now, before I do... Um, please hang on until the end because I want to tell you I have a special offer on the course at the end which I want to tell you about, okay? For five minutes, okay? So I won't keep you long at the end and I hope to have this done within an hour. Now, I might need to be reminded that the hour is coming up and I'm sure the host will remind me but an hour is probably, or even less, I'll probably try and get through to it because I know you guys have got lots of other things to do and just want to get the data, get in and get out and go home for a cup of tea, okay? Um... Yeah, now also if you've got the TV on at the same time as you're watching this particular webinar, uh, if you don't mind turning them off, that would be great. Uh, if the cat is crawling all over you and is going to walk on your laptop or your iPhone, just put them over there somewhere, over somewhere else, the other side of the room and tell them to be quiet. Okay, I just need to get, I want that you get all the data here tonight. Okay, um, for me personally, I've been doing this for over 25 years. I started in Munich in Germany in the 90s. I came across this book. And at the time, I was looking for some answers. And I've stuck with this subject for over 25 years for the simple reason that it works. And for no other reason. And this is my test of a self-improvement subject. Either it works stably and gets to the root of the issue, or it doesn't work. And it's only a temporary thing. So this is... Uh, really about getting to the root of stuff and really handling them for good, not just patching you over uh, with a little sticky plaster and send you on your way. Actually handle the root, okay? So if your kid comes home with bruises every day, well, you can fix the bruises or you can teach the kid how to handle the bully, you know? So that's kind of the, the ultimate handling. Okay. Um, yes, we're here to talk about narcissists, I'm going to define in a minute what they are. Of course, we've all had personal stories. I myself have had many experiences with the narcissist and what effect they can have on a person and uh, the effect that they had on me. What I'd like to find out from you before I launch into the whole explanation of this subject and examples and how to heal from narcissistic abuse, I would like to find out from you what you want to learn about. Okay. In other words, when you clicked on that link and you registered for this webinar, you wanted to find out something. You want to say, oh, that might be, maybe it was just general interest. But I'd like to find out, if you don't mind popping in the chat, what is the problem you're trying to solve? And that gives me an idea about uh, your purpose from being here so I can deliver a good service to you and so that you can get what you want out of this module. All right? So that's the question for, I have for you. This is your next exercise. Put in the chat what problem you're trying to handle. Uh, is there somebody that is affecting your life that you consider to be a narcissist? Uh, do you feel that you're a narcissist yourself and your wife sent you to the webinar or your husband sent you to kind of get checked out or something? Uh, is it just general education? You know, what is the reason for you being here? Pop it into the chat. I'm interested to see... Why did you come? Um, because I just want to make sure I give you what you want. Okay? So let me see what's coming in. Uh, Ray, how to manage these types in the workplace. Okay, let me just type these down. So we've got workplace. Thank you, Ray. How to manage these types in the workplace. Good. Getting out of relationship. Thank you, Sabrina. Relationship. Okay, thank you. Very good. To deal with... From past relationship to move forward. Yeah. 
So we've got present and past. Okay, thank you very much, Yvette. Uh, Therese, thank you. Um, understanding, okay, very good. Understanding the past. Uh, relationship, marriage, thank you very much, De Mante. Very good. Uh, Christy, trying to understand why individuals behave that way. Okay, again, understanding. And this is like a duplicate of what the last person said. Dealing with past relationship. Okay, present and past. We've got that. Very good. Thank you, Christy. Uh, Shruti. Hi, Shruti. To move on from a relationship marriage of this kind and to identify and advice. Yes, got it. Again, relationships, present and future. We're going to cover all that. Thank you. Um, then, Rosalie, don't want to feel low self-esteem, confidence because of being insulted and put down. Okay, very good. Confidence. Okay, esteem. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, don't feel it. Paul, how to love someone who is like this. Okay. So that's present. Yeah. Present relationship. Uh, I want to heal. Uh, so that's Marie. Dealing with past narcissistic traumas. Okay. So we're talking about past relationships with whoever it was. Very good. Um, Aileen, I want to heal after abusive persons. Heal. Okay. So we got that. That's past stuff. Thank you, Aileen. And welcome to the webinar. By the way, I didn't say hello to you at the beginning. Maruna, how to move on and get confidence back after dealing with this type of person. Okay, so we've got this here. Thank you. Rosie, trying to understand why my husband shows all characteristics of narcissistic behavior. Okay, got it. So this is understanding. Okay, so now let me just, um, so we have work. Okay, we're just going to put down relationships. I want to just keep this here as a kind of a guide for myself. Uh, past, understanding, and confidence. Okay, I'm going to keep this here as a little guideline so that I make sure that I can I get all that covered properly. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very, very much for that. Really appreciate it. And it gives me a really good guide for the webinar. So, okay. Now, uh, so I want to first of all define this word narcissist because it's, um, it's quite a, a relatively new term. I mean, it's not very new, but it's been uh, used a lot more frequently. Uh, currently, okay? So we have narcissist. Okay? I'm going to show you what the derivation of the word, where it came from, and it came from Greek, uh, which is narke, sorry, narke, which basically means numb. Yeah, here. Numb. So that's basically where the word came from, numbness. I think it's a very good derivation because it's, uh, from my perspective, a narcissist would be a real hardline narcissist would be pretty kind of numb to other people's feelings, okay? Now, there was also this other fella called Narcissus, this old Greek story about a guy who loved his reflection so much, beautiful young man, loved his reflection so much, he stared at it for so long that he turned into the narcissist flower. The daffodil, basically, turned into, this is the old legend, okay? Now, the word narcissist has had many changes throughout its history, okay? I want to give you the very basic definition of where it started. The definition of narcissist is someone who has excessive uh, interest in or admiration For oneself or physical appearance. Okay, so basically um, everybody can have an interest in themselves and we all try to at least not put ourselves down every day of the week. You know, you try to have a good interest in yourself. Like there's nothing wrong with having an interest in yourself and your physical appearance. There's nothing wrong with having admiration for yourself. You know what? Pat on the back every now and again. There's nothing wrong with that. Admiration for your physical appearance. You look in the mirror, you think, you know what? I look really well today. I feel good. I'm a good person. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just this word excessive, uh, where the person is just kind of going a bit too far. Okay? That's basically excessive interest in or admiration for oneself or one's physical appearance. Okay? Now, so that's the basic definition. And 
when you read that, you think, okay, so what? It's like if somebody is excessively interested in themselves, excessively interested in their physical appearance, well, then so what? I mean, as long as it's not hurting you, as long as it's not damaging people around you, let them on, you know, let them have that opinion and, and so forth. So this was your original definition of a narcissist, someone who thinks that, I don't know, they're just overly interested in themselves. And again, where the narc numbness comes in, maybe numb to other people around them to a certain degree. Now, the word narcissist has been expanded by certain uh, professions to include various different negative factors in addition to these things here. So we're going to get rid of these and add a few more. And this is why you're here tonight. So when you think of a narcissist, you're thinking of somebody who has the following traits. Okay? Selfish. Special treatment they deserve or feel they deserve. Okay? Lack empathy. Okay? Controlling others. others um, need for admiration uh, cause other people to doubt themselves okay now apart from probably well even with the last one like most people have had these from time to time a narcissist, per Oxford, per the Oxford Dictionary, is somebody who has, uh, let's see, how do they phrase it here? A, a combination of the following traits, okay? It doesn't say it, it has all of them, but it could be a combination of these. So you could have somebody who's just selfish and feels they deserve special treatment, and even just by definition, you could call that person a narcissist. Now, as I'll tell you in a minute, there's two types um, but you could call a person, but and somebody who lacks empathy, I think we've all felt that from time to time, controlling others, I mean, look, as a businessman or a businesswoman, you have to be able to control your staff, you have to be able to control what's going around you, going on around you. If you have kids, you have to be able to control kids. If you have a classroom full of students, you have to have some sort of control. Um, we're implying here that it's bad control, but it's not stated in the dictionary needing admiration and causing others to self-doubt. This one particularly is probably the nastiest of the whole lot because what a narcissist, one of the negative types that I'm going to go into in a minute, will try to do is make you doubt yourself and constantly ask you indirect questions or phrase things in such a way to make you wonder Am I making the right decision? Maybe I'm not the right person for the job. Maybe it's the wrong thing to do. And just causes you to constantly pause and think. Whereas all you know, you know you just need to do it because you know it. But the person causes you to think. Think, 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 think. And then think for 10 years and then all your opportunities are gone. Now, the thing about this from the uh, Oxford Dictionary is that it's very easy to grab anybody that you don't like that you think is cocky, that you think is a bit overconfident, and just stick them with a narcissist label. Uh, all they have to do is have a combination of a few of those and then plaster them with a narcissist label. And there you go, you didn't agree with me, so therefore you're a narcissist. And so I hear the word narcissist being thrown around an awful lot, um, but I'm going to clarify the reason why you're here because for you to be here on this webinar, you have probably experienced a certain type of narcissist, which I'm going to go into. But it's very easy to go around calling people a narcissist, uh, but they might not necessarily be the person I'm going to talk about tonight. Okay? The other thing is that um, certain professions, and I'm not going to get into who or what, uh, because this is my opinion, like to give people lovely little labels. Okay? And I'm not a man for labels. Person, he's got um, he's got narcissistic personality disorder, uh, or he has um, oh he's he's a, a community narcissist. I heard this on one of the uh, programs I was listening to uh, not so recently, but about this was somebody who gives to charity, 
but gives it to charity because it makes him feel good and makes him look good. And so he's now labeled uh, a community, or what's, I don't know exact phrasing, a community narcissist. And that's a bad thing. Avoiding and, of course, ignoring the fact of he's giving all this money to charity, which is a good thing. So people tend to focus on the negatives. And it, it's important to do a broad assessment of somebody before you label them with this hard, hard rule. Okay, so these are the basic traits. The problem with them is you can stick them on everybody, and there's, there's two different types. There are people who give you a hard time and are not really the real type of narcissist I'm going to go over, okay? So there are two types. By the way, the reason I'm not into the whole labeling thing is I get, I, I hear people being labeled with all sorts of disorders, this, and you know, he holds his pen too highly in his hand disorder, and uh, he looks at the camera too much disorder, and uh, he picks up a piece of paper disorder, and there's a, usually a, a nice pill to go with that. I'm not interested in that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so, we have two types. Uh, we have narcissists, we'll put this at the top, okay? And we have two types, okay? We have what's called a suppressive person. And a suppressive person is a person who pushes other people down, directly or indirectly. And I'm going to give you a couple of the things that will show you that in a minute. And then we have a non-suppressive. who's actually a social personality and kind of the opposite, all right? So the non-suppressive narcissist will be somebody who does have these traits from time to time. They do control others. They make you doubt yourself. They criticize you, put you down, abuse you verbally, mentally, occasionally. But one of the key things here is they can change. In other words, if you take it up with them and say, look, I don't like it over a cup of tea or 10 cups of tea. I don't like it when you call me an idiot every hour. Maybe if you could cut it down to every two hours, that would be amazing, okay? I just don't like it when you call me an idiot every, every hour of the day, please. Now, somebody who is a non-suppressive, uh, not a suppressive person, can look at that and go, you know something, I didn't even realize what I was doing. I didn't re I thought I was just being funny by calling you an idiot and being angry and getting out my stress on you. And I didn't realize I was doing that. You know what, I can change this. Now maybe it takes them a couple of turns to change it, but they change. And one of the traits of a social personality, non-suppressive, who does have narcissist traits at times, or maybe regularly, is that they can change. And it's only necessary to talk to them a few times, listen, remind them, remind them, and eventually they change, okay? Now, this is the boy or girl that you wanna watch out for because one of the major factors here is they won't change. Now, I didn't say uh, can't change, I said won't change. They won't respond to treatment or any kind of reform or psychotherapy. It's just a whole case of putting you down day and night, sometimes with a beautiful smile. You know, I love you to bits. That's why I want you to stay home all day and do nothing, because I care. Uh, or they can be very antagonistic and really attack you and say, you're no good, you're useless, you're good for nothing, you'll never be any good for anything, and just keep giving you that message. So you have a suppressive person who's a narcissist, and you have a non-suppressive person who sometimes, or maybe regularly, displays the traits of narcissism. Now, to, d to identify whether a person is in either of these brackets, there are basically 12 characteristics, okay? And I'm not gonna go through all the 12. Um, I'm gonna show you this little booklet at the end, it's called The Cause of Suppression, and it lists out the 12. I might just go over one or two. Um, there's 12 characteristics that you can learn about which will help you to identify if somebody is a true suppressive person who is putting you down in your life directly or indirectly all right now when you're doing your analysis you can't just 
examine the negative traits. You also, to be fair to somebody, there are also 12 traits of the social personality. And so you have to do an examination of both sides of the story. If a person has a majority, a, a major majority of these, then you could safely assume that the person fits into this bracket. Okay? So I'll go over one of the points. And this is just one little point out of the 12 that I'm going to share with you, okay? And here's what they do. They speak in generalities. Okay? Now, look, we all do that from time to time. We speak in generalities. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows that. But this person will speak about that in a lot more, a lot more frequently and usually use it to... Um, give a person a picture of another person to give them the idea that they're bad. So as an example, they might say something like, everybody knows you're not good enough. Now, when asked, who is everybody, it usually turns out to be just one person. But according to this oppressive person, everybody thinks you're bad. Everybody in the office doesn't like you. Nobody in the family is getting on with you. Or they could say something like this. It's a fact that you are just going to follow in your great Uncle Sing Sing's uh, footsteps and end up in jail. It's a fact. I mean, it's a generality. It's a generalization. And the problem with these ones, it's very hard to grab it. Because what a suppressive person will do is they'll try to spread a whole lot of general comments around you. And so it's very hard to grab it. It's very hard to grab, to, to, to actually grab hold of it, and it just throws you into confusion if you're not smart and you're not well able to keep your eye on it. So keep your eye on generalities. Now, it's not to say that sometimes we all ourselves do that occasionally, but this person would do it more often and specifically about trying to build a negative picture. Nobody likes Joe, or uh, all Irish people are alcoholics. Or, um, you shouldn't talk to him, he's from the other side of town. It's a big generality, it's not specific, you know. Now, if you compare this to the opposite side of the scale, we've got uh, this one here. Uh, they're very specific. So, a person who's got social traits, uh, and this is just one point out of the 12, by the way, is very specific. In other words, um, if, let's say... Uh, they heard bad news, okay, that, you know, they think the company is going to shut down. Now, a suppressive person would tell you, oh, yeah, did you hear the company is going to shut down? It's all over the place. It's all over the media. Whereas this person would say, I heard the place is going to close down. Jim told me. So they're very specific about where they get their information. And when they're passing it on to you, it's, it's a very specific thing. They tell you it, it came from this exact person. And you know, often if there's too much bad news, a social personality would generally cut it out. So the reason I'm saying this to you is this, is that if you believe somebody is a narcissist, and yes, they can have narcissistic traits, but it's important to then reclassify that and determine if, is this person suppressing you or is this temporary behavior and not really what the person is like? For example, teenagers can be very lacking in empathy and very selfish and very controlling at times during the teenage period. But that doesn't make them, you know, hardcore, suppressive uh, narcissists. All right? And so I want to make this clear because... Um, it's, it's important not just to make a quick assessment of somebody, oh, I just don't like the vibes of that person. You might not get good vibes from the person, but there is a reason why you might not get good vibes, and I'll explain that in the next section, okay? Now, so I hope this gives you a little understanding of uh, the traits. Uh, there are more. There's 12 in total. You examine both sides. And then if you find that you are connected to this type of a person here, who's just not going to change puts you down day and night, and it's causing you to get sick. And by the way, when you're connected to somebody like this, they will cause you um, 
to basically roller coaster. You go up and down, up and down. When you're with them, you go down. When you're away from them, you go up. So up and down, roller coaster. So if your life is a roller coaster, any roller coasters here? Anybody want to uh, pop in the chat whether you experience roller coaster? When I say roller coaster, I mean like what you see in a fun fair or a carnival. You know, you're up and down, up and down. Grand on Monday, terrible on Tuesday, fine again on Wednesday, horrible on, on, on Thursday. Or week by week, you go up and down. Up and down. Totally unpredictable. The wife is coming home going, Husband, you know, last week you were grand. This week you're down. The pre previous you were, you, were, you were fine. You know, it's just hard to predict what you're going to be like. Uh, okay, so some people have found that before. Demante, uh, Chantel. Hello, Chantel. Didn't say hello to you at the beginning. Uh, Marie, Therese, Chris, Chris, Kirsty, and uh, Shruti. Very felt very confused throughout and it's a very good point you make Shruti because one of the things that a suppressive person will do is they will try to make you doubt yourself constantly make you doubt yourself and your stability in life okay so it's important uh, and also in this booklet which I'm going to show you about later on um, if you've got this you've got two choices really and that is to handle the situation and when I say handle, I think it's probably the better of the two handlings that I'm going to tell you. To try to handle it. Cups of tea as much as you can. Uh, you know, try to deal with the situation. Because sometimes if you do the next one I'm going to tell you, you end up attracting the same type of person. So you either handle or disconnect. There's only really two choices. Everybody has a right to disconnect. If you have um, a boss who is constantly suppressing you in life, you have a right to say au revoir. I'm finding a new job. Take care of yourself. All the best. You have a right to do that. Um, this, the problem with this comes in when you're talking about family, when you're talking when there's kids involved. Um, you know, when there's a, a, a big company and you've got a very important part of that company, it's very difficult sometimes to get into that. And I do recommend that people try and handle this as best as they possibly can so that they're at least on top of the situation and not beneath it. And again, there's more in the booklet. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to go on to, so this gives you a little bit of an understanding of, um, of what the narcissist is and the fact that it's important to look at both sides and not just judge it from a couple of pieces of bad behavior. It's important not to just judge the person because they could be going through a rough time in life and turn nasty temporarily you know so that's that's important and then the handling for it is there are only two handlings it's handle a situation or disconnect that's the only handling of the situation i always recommend getting this done as best as you possibly can okay now next we go over this if you have been in an abusive relationship or if you've had trouble getting away, uh, moving on uh, from the past uh, abusive relationship. I'm going to show you now why that is and what you need to do to handle it. And I just saw here confidence. One of the things about a suppressive person is they will 100%. Number one thing they will do is try to undermine your belief in yourself your decisions, your certainty, and your confidence. Try to always make you doubt yourself, okay? Try to doubt, you know, kind of cut away, cut away, cut away, okay? Um, okay, Maruna, uh, like a light switch, you never know what mood they're in and they can feel worthless. Yeah, okay, good. Now you could have a person who is a suppressive person who is like that and that situation would need to be handled. You could also have a person who's really behaving really strangely and you just have to pound at home listen you need to change you need to get that changed and turn it around i'm not going to tolerate this anymore because you have a right to be treated with respect okay now why i'm going to answer this question myself i'm just asking why do you think a narcissist who's a suppressive person why is it 
that they can control you and cause you to change your mood so easily. In other words, you're feeling great, you're feeling happy, this narcissist suppressive person, this nasty person, whether it's a husband or a wife or a, or a neighbor or a boss or an associate or somebody that you meet in the street, all they do is come along and start being aggressive. Okay? Or they try to, or they just say things that are upsetting. Why is it that they have so much of an easy effect on you? Because remember, there is only one thing to know about this. They have only one power. If you have a suppressive narcissist in your environment, they have only one power over you. One power. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a sec. To tell you what that is, I want to explain something about the mind. Your mind is a collection of pictures from your past. Don't get into all of this mumbo jumbo about the brain and the chemical imbalances this and the chemical imbalances that. I heard that as a teenager, that look, it's all about your brain and you this and that and you take drugs for this and it makes you feel great. You feel sad, you take a drug, you feel happy, you take a drug, you feel you want to study more, you take a drug. I didn't agree with it since I was a teenager and I certainly don't agree with it now. It's just a whole load of generalities and packaging people into these little categories. Oh, this person has... Um, I look at the wall, too much disorder, or caffeine drinking disorder, he drinks too much coffee. In my opinion, ah, I've no time for that type of stuff because it usually, the implication is that you can't do anything about it, so we'll just pump the guy full of drugs and that's it. Your mind is a collection of memories from your past, simple as that. So right now, if I asked you to remember learning how to ride a bike, Go ahead. Just remember your first bicycle. Okay. Now, for any of you who got a picture of your first bicycle, that is simply a photograph in the mind. Okay? It's a photograph of a bike. All right? And that is a picture. And that's what the mind is. It's a collection of pictures from your past. And you use that information to make decisions about your future, okay? Should I go on path A or path B? And you learn that some people are not trustworthy, so I'm not going to trust that person again. Or this person is trustworthy based on my knowledge, so I'm therefore going to trust that person. The reason a suppressive person or a narcissist can control you so easily is because you carry around with you a portion of this mind which is reactive. In other words, it's a push button part of the mind. It's basically reactive. Now, what that means is that your narcissist friend, all they have to know is that something makes you nervous. Something makes you stressed. Something causes you to change your mood. Something causes you to lose your temper or to get sad or to get anxious or to get worried or whatever it is that your mood has changed into. And what they will do is press that button good and hard, deliberately. As a friend, as a friend, I'm going to now trigger you off, okay? There's a part of your mind which is called the reactive mind. Now, the full definition of this reactive mind, which I was going to read out to you, but I want to summarize it actually, is in page 50 of this book, Dianetics. Okay? And uh, I'll just go over the basics. Your reactive mind is a part of your mind which files, in other words, yeah, it files, okay, It's in a filing cabinet and retains two things. Number one is physical pain. So if you have um, a very bad fall off a ladder and you hurt your back, 
There is an element of unconsciousness that goes with that, and that incident is stored not in here, in here, in the reactive mind. If you, um, during childbirth, uh, you had to get a cesarean section, and you had to be put unconscious, that incident, while you were unconscious and this mind was switched off, that incident is stored in here because there's physical pain involved. If you were um, playing football and you fell and broke your leg, for a portion of time, this mind switches off a little bit and the incident is stored in here. Can anybody else, so this is your first exercise, so your next exercise, what I'd like you to do is take a moment to just think of any serious physical injury you had and pop it into the chat. Anybody who, does it, who doesn't want to mention it, it's completely fine. But if you've had a physical injury, a severe physical injury, and you don't mind popping it into the chat, would you please do so? I just want to get a couple of examples. So what I'd like you to do is give me an example of something that happened to you which was a physically painful incident. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how it all connects in to the narcissist in just a minute. So an example of a physical incident that happened to you personally. I'll just take the first one or two that come in, if any come in. Have you had any accidents or operations or um, major falls, anything like that happen to you? Anybody want to pop it in? If you don't, it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, the man say head injury from falling. Good example. And the head injury, uh, you know, you fall. During that fall, when there's an impact, the lights go out a little tiny bit, and an incident is stored here in a separate package. Okay? Head injury. Thank you, Demante. Uh, Teresa, major shoulder surgery following dislocation. I oh, got it. Okay, very good. And again, surgery means anesthetic. It means unconsciousness. It means you can't remember what happened during the operation. It means it's stored in here. Because there's pain during an operation as well. There's things getting cut, and you might not feel it, but it's, it's still happening. Okay? Uh, and, and hello, N. Dalton. Um, did to say hello to you at the beginning. Burned with soup when five years old. Okay, another really good example. The shock of the impact, very painful. The lights go out to a certain degree. Maybe you don't go fully unconscious, but an incident gets stored. Great example. Thank you. Um, Sean, arm got cut deep by glass. Very good. Thank you very much. Good example. Horrible experience, I'm sure, but good example. Uh, uh, Rosie, constant backache, labour pain. Got it. Very good. So again, anybody who's had kids, you know, during that incident, it's, it, it can be extremely painful uh, depending on what, how, how it goes. It depends. Each individual is different. But it could certainly get recorded in here. Okay. Uh, Shruti, during childhood, fell off a bike and severely injured. Very good example. I did too. I fell off a bike and was badly injured too. My knee swelled up like 14 footballs. Okay, thank you, Shruti. So, that's the first thing that gets stored in here. The second thing that gets stored is loss. So, you've got physical pain and you've got painful emotion. Now, people say to me all the time, listen, Vincent, time is a great healer. All you have to do is, you know, wait it out. It'll be fine, Vincent, in time. It'll all work out, just wait you see. Just give it a 10 year period, two or three, maybe two or three years, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 50. I don't know quite for sure, but it'll all go away, Vincent. What I have found is that time is not the great healer. When you lose somebody close to you, if it's a loss of a friend or a family member, or you had a divorce, or you lost a child, or you lost a job, those losses often don't just happen and float away on a little cloud they also stick in here. Because just like a physical impact, they can have a huge impact on you. And to a certain degree, maybe not as much as the previous ones, the lights go out. And so in here is also stored moments of loss. I'm not gonna ask you for examples of that because I'm sure everybody has had a loss of some nature, whether it was a grandparent or a friend or a family member. Losses that you've had get stored in this thing called the reactive mind. Now, 
why is it called reactive? It's called reactive because it's push button. It's a part of your mind that you are not in control of. It's push button. In other words, if there's something out here that that person is saying, that narcissist is saying, that matches up in any way to what's gone on to you in the past, this stuff is going to trigger automatically. It's going to start affecting your mind, your thinking, and there goes your emotion and your action. There goes your confidence in yourself. So all a narcissist has to do is know about what happened to you, press those buttons good and hard, really keep bringing up the past, you know, let's keep bringing up the past, keep bringing it up because they know that if they keep triggering those past incidents, it's going to cause you stress and bring you under control. Now, it could happen that a person is not a, a real bad intentioned narcissist or a social personality and sometimes they can say things by accident they don't know about the incident but they said something accidentally that pushed your button the only power the only power that a narcissist who is a suppressive person if that's the person in present time or in the future the only power they have over you the only ability they have to control your emotions or ruin your confidence, ruin your self-esteem, cause you to get stressed out. The only power is their ability to press your buttons. Now, they might not know about the incidents that happen to you, but they know what triggers you and keep those buttons nice and pressed. A normal person wouldn't do that. They know what upsets you and so they don't get into it. A normal social personality tries to avoid pushing people's buttons that causes them major stress. That doesn't mean you can't get angry if somebody is stealing your bicycle or, you know, they're not performing at work. You're, Come on, you need to get, let's get going here. You know, if you're captain of a football team and some guy is letting in all the goals, you know. So, if somebody is trying to control you, that's their only power. So what does that tell you? It tells you this, that if that stuff is completely cleared up, they will have no longer any power over you, any power. Or if you're a boss, they could sack you, of course, that's a, that's a thing, or, or if they're a husband or wife, they could leave you. So there's aspects of that, but they've got no power once that stuff is cleared up. And now I'm going to go over with you how it gets cleared up. Because everybody has this baggage. Uh, I'll give you a little example before we continue. Let's say back here, um, let's say when you were five, okay? Somebody brought up the number five in the chat. I don't know who it was. You were five years of age, and the postman who used to visit the house used to make sure to give you a good kick up the behind every time they delivered letters. I know this is a bizarre example, right? They used to give you a, kick, a good kick every time they delivered letters and caused you pain and stress, okay? Nowadays, right, all it takes, you're now working in a post room. You are, you've got a job in the general post office, the GPO in Dublin. How did you get that job? You don't know, but you're now working in a post office and the guy who's your boss is a bit, bit angry, and there's enough similarity here to trigger off this. I know this is a bit of a bizarre example, but it can cause you stress. So that, that boss in the post office that you have, he knows all he has to do is get angry with you, and you'll do whatever he wants, because you're afraid of losing your job. Or you could have somebody who had a severe loss. Let's say if you, um, Let's say if you lost your mother, okay? Um, let's say if you're a guy and you lost your mother. And um, somebody knows this and they know that if they just keep bringing up that subject, it makes you very sad and easy to control. So they say, oh, 
God, wasn't it terrible what happened to your mother 20 years ago? Oh God, I keep thinking about that every day. You must have been very close to her, were you? How did you feel at the funeral? And then the person starts to get sad and so forth. Yeah, I know. Come over here and I'll give you a hug. Anyway, is there any chance I could get that loan off you? I, I'm just making this up as I'm going along. But the point is that a narcissist who is a real suppressive person could potentially manipulate you by just triggering off losses from your past and using you that way. Okay? Now, I want to go over next how it's um, handled. Okay? Okay, can I... Um, can I ask you, uh, this is your next exercise. This, the title of this webinar is How to Heal from Narcissistic Abuse, okay? What have you done, and you just type in one word if you don't mind, or two words. What have you done in the past to try and help yourself to get over narcissistic abuse? What have you done? Is it taking walks? Is it trying to be positive? Could you let me know? Because I'd like to uh, write them on the board. Uh, so this is your next exercise. What steps have you taken to try and clear up narcissistic abuse? Sorry, try to deal with it or um, cope with it, I should say. What have you done? Just pop your example into the chat. Just one word or two. What have you done to try and help yourself with... Uh, a narcissist trying to deal with it what have you done that has kind of either worked or it hasn't worked you can put down anything okay uh, let's see staying positive okay so positive thinking somebody else says therapy good okay thank you uh, staying positive believing in my confidence listening to my inner voice thank you Demante and often therapy try to block it out okay block it out Thank you very much. Who was that that said that? Marana, thank you so much. Uh, Try to talk to the person. Yeah. That's good. And that works with somebody who's not a suppressive person, but it's often very difficult for somebody who is a real hard line, wants to put you down every day of the week type of person. Okay, trying to distance myself. Rosie, that's a popular one. Uh, so it's quick communication. Yeah, that's the disconnect uh, example that I gave you earlier on. So thank you very much for that. Um, moving out, Shruti, uh, says Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Shruti, moving out to a different place and pursuing career goals. Good. So that's, again, good in communication. Uh, Claire, going to the gym. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Get your mind off it. People have done that. Being, uh, I think you meant assertive. Yeah. Okay, assertive. Okay, so trying to be positive. Yeah, assertive. All right. Good. What else have we got here? Self-love, Marie, spiritual direction, inner child healing exercise, seeking for counselling or psychotherapy, block the person. Okay, good. So we've got a whole bunch here and I'll just put in uh, if you've got spiritual help. Okay. And self-love as well, trying to stay positive. And Therese went to a group to talk to others. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put that under therapy, kind of group communication. Yeah, with no response, Paul. Yes, I get that. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one because somebody who's a real never going to change suppressive person, you can talk to them until the cows come home and they, you know, it's, it's difficult. But there's some really good stuff to learn in this little book that which I'm going to show you later. Okay, now, these are all fine and look, they've helped you and if they do help you on an ongoing basis, then by all means, use these. What I have personally found when you're dealing with a, nar a narcissistic person who's suppressive is these ones tend to be something that you have to keep doing and keep doing and keep doing to try and get on top of it and it's a lot of work or it can be it can be a lot of effort it can be a lot of effort all right so of course you know you need to deal with it of course you know you need to sit down with the person and handle the situation or disconnect you know it but there's so much of this reactive mind that kicks in that it's very difficult to do it you could be sitting down with the narcissist and, and explaining to them how they are hurting your business, hurting your feelings, your children, hurting your life. And all they have to do is press one little button in you and say, sure, you're overthinking it. Or, you know, or sure, you did that yourself years ago. Remember, just press one little button and you're gone. And you're stressed and you're worrying and you're uncertain and you've lost your confidence again. Okay? So, 
These are very good folks. Thank you very much for these. And I'm glad that these at least helped you. Let me just tell you what the approach in Dianetics is and the reason I have been doing this for 25, over 25 years now at this point. Okay. In Dianetics, we have a thing called auditing. The word auditing means to listen and to guide. So some people mentioned therapy there, but I want to break this down to you. This is a kind of a different word. Uh, I found that when people go to therapies, in many, many therapies, it's just talk, 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 and it can take a long time. And the results aren't permanent. And then I go back and talk again, and talk and talk. Auditing involves two people. An auditor basically means a person who listens and who guides. And the person who is receiving the help, who has their eyes closed, wide awake, is called a pre-clear. Pre means before, and clear is the end result of Dianetics. There's an end result, and the end result is you back to yourself again, and with all that stuff cleared up. So the auditing session, in this session, the auditor uses the 10-step procedure in book three, chapter five of this book, to help the person to return to incidents in the past. Painful incidents, losses, and these kind of things. And using the exact steps one to 10 on each incident, as many times as, as possible, with communication, the pain and the stress gets cleared up. And what happens is that incident, okay, this is the person's normal mind, okay? Once the person clears up this stressful incident, it goes back over here as just a memory. As just a memory, and that's it. It doesn't change uh, the fact that it happened, but what you do is you get rid of the pain. Now, often when you're dealing with an, an upset with a narcissist, you've had, maybe you've had some physical or verbal abuse from such a person, and it was very upsetting, and you deal with an incident that happened, say, last year, and you've used the procedure, but you're still feeling stressed about it. What that means in every single case is that there is an earlier incident connected to it, an earlier similar incident. In other words, this person might have abused you a year ago, but then there's also something that happened three years ago with the same person. Now, if that doesn't clear up, it means there's an earlier one. Maybe somebody in your school gave you some verbal abuse or physical abuse. And what you're trying to do in each session is you're trying to handle each change until you get to the basic. So a Dianetic session is typically often not just one incident you're handling, it's a chain of incidents. So each session you're handling a chain of incidents. And the purpose of that is to get to the basic because that basic incident is holding in a lot of the stress, and often it is totally buried. So you think that your stress is coming from what happened to you last year, but in many, many cases, it's connected to much heavier incidents that happened a long time beforehand. But it's important to clear these up because like peeling an onion, you're removing the layers, and then you'll eventually get to this one, which clears up the whole chain. So Dianetic sessions are not specifically about handling just one incident or random incidents. They're about handling chains of incidents. And the job of the auditor is not to be a life coach. It's, uh, his job is to listen. That's it. Listen and guide. In fact, one of the rules in, in the auditing session is that the auditor is not allowed to say to the person, well, I think that the reason you're so stressed out is because your mother wasn't good to you when you were a child. He's not allowed to go and try to make the pre-clear's mind up for them. This is the procedure in Dianetics. The very, I mean, I give you a very broad overview and it's explained fully in the book. Now, we've come to nine o'clock and the end of the webinar. Uh, in a minute, I want to just show you about a course I've put together, but before I do, just to briefly go over what we've gone over here, Work, relationships, tasks, understanding, and confidence, okay? As I, I think I've covered all of those, it's important to identify 
the difference between a suppressive narcissist and somebody who's non-suppressive, okay? If you have a suppressive narcissist around you, you have to either handle the situation or disconnect. Best if you can handle as best you can, because disconnect can be very troublesome sometimes. And besides, if you run away from a situation, you're often gonna pull in the same type of person again. So it's important to learn how to handle it now rather than later. Um, and look, one thing that you need to remember is this. The effects that a narcissist has had on you, these bad experiences, if they're not handled, what happens is these chains grow. Every time a new incident happens, which reminds you of the past, it just keeps growing and growing. So the more you don't handle the abuse that you've had from a narcissistic relationship, the bigger this reactive mind gets. And so as time goes by, five, 10, 15 years passes, it's more difficult to handle it. And also you think that, ah, that's just me. Okay, so that's the auditing, uh, how to handle it as well. So I wanna just show you the little course I have put together for you. And then I will come to the last um, little questions I have because uh, if you don't mind hanging on for a couple of minutes, um, I'm just gonna show you this course. I'm gonna leave the chat open till half nine. For anybody who wants to hang on, there'll be questions, uh, questions and answers uh, for me personally, uh, but you won't have to stay. Um, and uh, we'll end up at half nine roughly, but right now it's gonna be the end of the webinar, but I just wanna show you my course first, okay? It's a three part uh, set of workshops. It's done on Zoom from eight to nine uh, p.m. Okay, now uh, that first one is happening. Maybe I can just ask the host, when is the first one? I think it's happening next weekend. Okay, just ask. One second. Okay. Uh, is it this Friday is the first one? It's three modules. It's done on a Friday night on Zoom. Um, for one hour and we cover a couple of basics so i'm just going to show you what each workshop is about very briefly number one is the mystery of the mind so we go into what is the mind what is everybody in this world trying to do and how do you know if you're making the right decisions so that's part one a general introduction part two the mother of all unwanted thoughts and here we go deep into the reactive mind to find out what started all the trouble and again, this is gonna be a very practical workshop. And yeah, it's, it's gonna just show you what caused it and how to clear it up. So that if a narcissist does approach you in future, they don't have anything to push. They don't have any buttons to push. And the third one is uh, the effect of emotional trauma and loss. Okay, uh, now let me just ask something here. going to ask a question of the host here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I've sent that. Um, now, I'm just looking to find out if the, if the actual first one is this Friday or the next Friday. I've just completely forgotten which, when it actually starts. Okay, so those are the first, or the three modules, okay? It's delivered with me personally and it's practical workshops. It's not like I'm gonna be sitting there talking all evening. It's give you some basics and get you to see the practical side of it as well. Now, it's just, what I cover on these is a segment from the book, okay? Uh, and as part of the workshop, you will also get a copy of the Dianetics book because I do want you to be reading it as well. And if you're not a book reader, don't worry. Uh, there's a DVD which is a two set DVD. It explains all the basics in the book. It's uh, two DVDs, four and a half hours, and it's um, uh, 32 mini movies, which explain all the basics in the book. So if you're not a book reader, don't worry, the DVD is there, but you'll be, like, I, I'd be hoping that you will kind of read along with the book as we're going. But on the workshops, we'll keep it nice and, nice and straightforward. Okay, so the 24th of June, which is this coming Friday. So this coming Friday is the first module, Friday night coming, 8 p.m. Thank you very much, Eric. Okay, now, the cost of the course is basically 
normally 30 euros, which is very reasonable. The, the book is actually sent to you with free shipping. If you enroll on it before 9.30 tonight, it will be 20 euros, okay? And there's gonna be a link going up in the chat now. So if anybody is interested and you want to join me uh, for these modules, it's three modules. I'm going to go over the basic things that you need to know about. And the purpose of it is to increase your knowledge and your stability so that you know what this is all about before you take it further, okay? And it's gonna be very beneficial. You have my personal email address to ask any questions. And um, I will basically be helping you through every single section of it, okay? So there's, uh, I put that offer up until 9.30 tonight just to encourage people to do it because honestly, I would really, really love it if everybody who's on Zoom tonight that I can see, I would love it if everybody join me on Friday night for these modules. And the beauty of it is that if you miss a module, you can catch it the next time around. So if you can't attend three in a row, you can catch them the next time around, okay? But it would be great if you could do the three in a row, but if you can't, I'm doing them on a circular basis, you'll actually catch up with it next time. So that's the course. Uh, it's 20 euros if you enroll before 9.30 tonight and 30 euros afterwards. Um, I'm gonna leave the chat open now for any questions and answers that you have. But before I do that, and this is for anybody who wants to hang on, I wanna say uh, a big thank you to everybody who's joined me and stuck with me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And uh, for everybody on Zoom, I will say good night to you all personally, but if you want to hang on for questions and answers, I'll be here until about 20 past or half nine. Uh, you can f feel free to do so. So thank you, Rosalie, and for having your camera on. Uh, Anne Doughton, thank you there. Uh, good to have you. Uh, Therese, uh, Nula, Maruna, uh, Rosie, Demante, Marie, Paul, Claire, Aileen, Shruti, Sean, Lorna, and Susan. Folks, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, I wish you all an absolutely beautiful evening, and thank you for giving me your time and the opportunity to speak to you about this, and I really do hope that you join me for these modules and I will take extra special care of you to make sure you get this data and you know more about what you should do with your life to handle these types of situations going forward, okay? So that's that. Uh, for anybody who's left, you can stay on and if you have any questions at all, please take this opportunity to pop them into the chat. I'm gonna go back and see if I missed any comments, but take this opportunity to ask any questions that you want to ask. Um, at all, or even if you feel you learn something from this webinar, I'd love it if you put it down into the chat. It would be just great for me to hear that. Um, yeah, but anything else that you want to ask, pop it into the chat there, that would be absolutely fabulous. Okay, let me just catch up on a few comments. Okay, let's see, stonewalling, Sean brought up that as one of the factors of a, um, yeah, trying to handle a narcissist. The thing with stonewalling is you, it, yeah, it, it, stonewalling is basically just kind of ignoring the person, and just not granting them any importance. It's fine, except um, it has to be done, like a person, often person just do it without trying to handle it first. And it's often a dodging mechanism and can often stress the situation out a little bit more. Uh, so I wouldn't always recommend it, uh, unless a person has actually already tried to handle the situation as best as they possibly can. But anyway, they definitely don't like it uh, if you stonewall such a person. Um, but I would be first of all working out how to handle this first, how to confront it, and how to deal with my own stuff so that you don't have to stonewall every potential narcissist that you might need to come across in the future. Because if they work in your company or they're a next door neighbor, it, it becomes very difficult. Okay, um, Okay. so the first module, as I said, is on the 24th of June, which is this coming Friday, okay? Eight o'clock sharp. Um, the price on the link is still coming up as 30 euros. Is there a promo code? Okay, that's fixed. Good, so that's actually fixed now. Great, Damante, thank you very much. Uh, and Dalton, thank you so much for your nice acknowledgement. And I think you've left, but anyway, that's grand, okay? I got to thank you. Uh, Rosie, uh, thank you very much for your nice acknowledgement. Paul, you're very welcome. Rosaline, you are so welcome as well. Maruna, you are welcome. Um, 
Very good, Shruti. I'm glad you learned a lot. Uh, price is now fixed. Okay, Sean. Oh, we got a question. By the way, feel free. Pop in. Look, if you're afraid to ask a question or if you're worried or if you're uh, kind of, you know, you don't want to highlight yourself, don't worry about it. Just pop it in and uh, that would be great. What if you were the narcissist and you were here watching this rather than the victim? Wow. Okay, Sean. Uh, I'm glad you asked me that question. One of the traits of a real suppressive person who's a narcissist is they can't look inwards. Now, in other words, they can't look in at themselves. There's no sense of looking in. It's always designed to put you in or have you look in at yourself. You always, you know, it's always, it's never that way. So if you have somebody on the webinar, if you think you're a narcissist who's a suppressive person, now I don't know you personally, if you think you are, it's 99.9% .9 likely you're not because self-improvement and um, self-looking at one's own behavior and whether it's the right or wrong and are they doing the right thing or not is not really a luxury that a suppressive person can afford to give. They're always looking at you. It's, it's, it's never anything to do with them. So if you're looking at this going, maybe I'm the narcissist, you know, okay, maybe you get into some of those traits I discussed at the beginning, controlling others, lack of empathy, but these things can be changed. You know, they can be changed. You can change them with some auditing. You can change them with some behavior and discipline. Um, yeah, but it doesn't necessarily mean you are a hardcore suppressive person who wants to put people down and just loves it and ruins people's lives. So. Uh, yeah, so a person could be on this webinar as the person who thinks they're the narcissist uh, and if they're looking for, I mean I suppose the person who's a narcissist could actually go on to the webinar and try to learn techniques about how they could put somebody down, that's possible. But I think anybody who joins these webinars, there's always a desire for improvement and uh, what I found with somebody who's real hardcore they, they want to see others going downwards, not upwards. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, social narcissist. Yes, Sean. Look, if there's all sorts of brackets of narcissists that have literally been invented. I have heard the most amazing categories of narcissist. But nowadays, they're branding everybody who's got any sort of a disagreeable personality trait as a dis-narcissist, or as I mentioned, a community narcissist. What was this? humanitarian narcissist, social narcissist, and it was, likes being around people, but is only doing it to make himself feel good. But you know what? Is it really damaging? I mean, who cares? Right, who cares really? Is it damaging other people is the question you need to ask yourself. And if it is, and you're aware of that, then you're not really one of these hardcore suppressive person narcissists, and you can change it, and you can change your behavior. Okay, Sean, I hope that helps. Yeah, there definitely is, Sean, a, a proper narcissist in sociopathy, yeah, which is like, you know, these, honestly, uh, Sean, this whole, um, when, when we start talking about behavior and all this kind of stuff, there's a whole branch of uh, definitions out there that have been turned left, right, and center. So when we talk about sociopathy, we're talking about people being against social personalities, people who are... Um, trying to put other people down. So there definitely is a line and it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to explain at the beginning that you can't just take, pick five aspects of a person's personality and go, right, there you go, that proves it. They're a social narcissist or a, or a sociop sociopathist, uh, whatever it is, sociopath, sorry, sociopath. And uh, you, you have to be able to take a, a broad look at it. And the other thing to remember is that sometimes the baggage from your past influences the way you view other people. So you might even think Joe's a narcissist because he reminds you of an actual narcissist from the past when in fact Joe isn't. And you're making that assumption. So it's very important to get in here and start clearing up this reactive mind uh, in addition to learning the basics. Oh, by the way, you know what? I'm forgetting something. Anybody who's left who hasn't enrolled, right? I forgot. I absolutely forgot. This booklet, 
is actually included if you enroll before 9.30. I forgot to say this. How could I forget? This booklet, which goes over all the different traits, um, so you've got the, uh, the suppressive person, is also called the antisocial personality, and there's the 12 traits there, and then we have the social personality and all the 12 traits, and then the next bit goes into the handlings of what you do. So for anybody who hasn't enrolled already, and even for those who have enrolled, this is sent to you free with the actual course, I'm sorry, with the book. So when you enroll on the course, the book or the DVD is sent to you with free shipping and this will be included if you enroll before 9.30. Damn it, totally forgot. But anyway, there you go, at least I remembered at the last minute. And yeah, on these, um, like, uh, uh, just to give you a little bit of a background to myself, I, uh, I grew up in the countryside myself in Kildare and I moved to Dublin in the 90s to go to college and uh, studied personal, personal management and did that uh, in university and um, went traveling to Germany, loved to see people happy, came across this subject, tried it on others first, me being the chicken that I was at the time, tried it on others first, got amazing results. It really stably helped them, not just for five minutes, and then decided, you know what, I might as well try this for myself, see if it will help me too, and I, I will tell you on the modules what happened to me. Uh, during this because it was quite extraordinary. But anyway, uh, yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, this material, uh, it's interesting for me because it's workable. Whether it's the most fancy theory in the whole world, it's got the most complications, is not really important for me. It's does it work or does it not work? And this works. And this works. And once you try it and you start learning it and you enroll in this uh, course, I'll go over the basics, and I think I'm um, you know, pretty confident that anybody who enrolls will want to continue with it afterwards. But obviously, it's your choice at the end what you want to do. And you know, at the end of the day, look, if all this course did was help you to be able to deal with narcissists going forward, that'd be worth it, right? Or if all it did was just help you to clear up the pain from past narcissists, and live a more relaxed life. I think that will be worth it. And so that's just, this is some of the things that we get into on the modules. Right folks, um, any other questions? Anybody wants to pop in? Please do, or comments, questions, comments, anything that you feel you benefited from the webinar, please feel free to pop it in. I don't see any more comments coming in. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more of, of a, um, just a background. The basics from this book are based on the most traditional methods of helping another person since the beginning of people talking to each other. These new fangled methods of, you know, talking to somebody for an hour or two and then sticking them with a label and popping a pill is just a shortcut to, uh, an, in my opinion, an ineffective, long drawn out episode of roller coaster. Okay? Oh, I feel great. I went to my therapist. I feel bad now tomorrow, so I have to go back again. You know, it's this roller coaster thing. This approach that I'm giving you is is a two-stage approach. Obviously, you're going to learn some of the basics to help you to identify who's who in your life. And that's really important because if you can do that, it makes, it makes you more stable. And what this, in this book, this book has actually got three books in it. Book one is the basics about the goal of Dianetics, what the clear is, and a summary of what auditing is about. Book two explains to you how your mind works, how people can press your buttons deliberately and accidentally, and how the mind affects the body as well. There's loads and loads of stuff about how physical issues can actually stem from this stuff here. And then in the third book, it's basically the full procedure, the 10-step procedure, which goes over exactly what this person does in a session 
to help this person clear up this stuff completely so that it doesn't keep coming back. And the pieces that I've picked out for the modules are the key pieces to know at the beginning. There's a lot more to know about, but what I've picked out are just some key basics that you need to know. And even just knowing those basics is things just are going to start clicking for you and you'll be like, okay, you know, okay, I feel more confident in myself. I think I know more about myself. And it won't be because I've said it to you or because, oh, you should believe Vincent because he said it. It'll be because on the workshops, I'm going to get you to examine it yourself and you can establish if it's true for you. And what I have found on the workshops is that people connect with this data. They like, because it makes sense, they go, bang, that, that's, that works, that works for me, I got that, that makes sense, boom, 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 boom. It all clicks into place. So at the end of the three modules, you literally have a person who's got all the pieces, the major pieces clicked into place. It doesn't mean everything's covered, of course it's not, but the major pieces are clicked. And uh, yeah, it's very, and the whole point is to help. My sole purpose, Yes, you have to buy the material and all the rest of it. Look at, you know, because it does cost to send things out and paper and all that type of stuff, right? Uh, electricity and cameras and all that type of jazz. But my sole purpose is to help other people. And myself, of course. I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore narcissist by any means. I do want to help myself. I want to help other people. This is my primary reason for doing what I do. I love to see people doing well. I love to see people becoming happy again. I love to see people regaining their confidence, becoming strong, because I know from having helped people that that's what they're truly like. Underneath all the uncertainties that you have, underneath all the doubts that you have about yourself, the suspicions, the lack of trust that you have in people because of the damage that a narcissist has done, underneath all of that, is a very, very strong, happy individual. And what we're doing in Dianetics is we want to strip off that old paint and get you back to yourself again. It doesn't change anything about yourself. It just restores you to who you really are and gives you back that ability that you know you have. You know you have it underneath. You know? Um, does anybody here have any... Just a quick question for you guys before, you, before we go. Um... Does anybody here have any other experience with self-improvement? You know, anybody have any kind of, um, you know, doing some self-help, but it didn't really work or it didn't create any sort of stability? Has anybody had that, you know, where you've tried something, but it didn't really, didn't really work, it didn't really get the result that you were looking for? Anybody had that? I know earlier on, uh, many people gave me lots of good examples of what they've done and I'm sure they've helped you along the way. But have you come across any uh, or have you tried any procedures that didn't work or didn't help you? If you want to pop that into the chat, that would be just fab. I'd just be interested kind of just to see has there been anything else before we kind of wrap up. <clears throat> Well, if not, then that's fine. That's okay. And if you have, then grand. Um, Sean. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Sean. Well, I took the traditional route, therapy, medication, but that's like a carousel. I couldn't agree with you more, Sean. I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's, it's one of these roundabouts that once you get on it, it's, it's hard to get off. It's hard to get off it. And like even for somebody who's, uh, let's say, been taking medication for a long, long time, and uh, the approach that a person would have to take is get with their doctor and kind of work out what the approach would be. But it can be a very difficult thing to get out of that route. Um, this is why uh, I have put these workshops together because the number one thing that I have found that helps with stability before a person enters any sort of auditing, even before a person comes in or starts any of this stuff, is a bit of education. Because people are regularly pumped with the wrong data, wrong information, completely wrong information, guesswork. 
The reason I'm able to go through this and tell you what's here, of course it's me telling you what this is about, but it's from also what I have personally observed from helping other people and from receiving it myself. I'm not just telling to people this just because it's in a book, because this fellow wrote a book and I think he's great and uh, the book says it. It's not because of that. It's because I've got personal experience with this, a lot of experience on both sides of it. And I know it creates stability and I know it works. But the key, key thing that I found is education is a real key thing. In life in general, education is absolutely vital. And so that's why I have recommended to people to do the workshops first because it gives that educational stability uh, before even getting into any of this. And of course, people are often excited. Oh, I want to get some auditing straight away. I'm like, oh, hang on a second. We need to get you to know a little bit about what it is and then we can get you going, you know? So anyway, thanks for sharing that, Sean. I mean, there's so many people like in Ireland, you know, we are as a country lacking, um, I suppose, broad facilities whereby people are, who are looking for answers, they're looking for help. Everybody's got some sort of a problem. A lot of people don't talk about it because they feel like, you know what, Joe down the road, he has the same or Mick, they've all got the same problems as me. So, you know, there's no difference. But it's, you know, I suppose one of the reasons why many people get into therapies and other things that aren't good for them or don't work is because there's nothing else. There's nothing else out there. And so uh, I really want to see that people get this knowledge and it's why I've done these webinars for the last many years um, to basically tell as many people as possible about this stuff because it works, you know? Um, okay. Say, and don't think that's their aim. Number one priority is pacification, making sure you're not any trouble to the society. That's your aim. Number one priority is pacification, making sure you're not, you're not any trouble to the society or potential trouble. Yeah, okay, I know what you're saying, Sean, which is basically trying to kind of make you into a situation where you're not causing trouble for others. Okay. Um, yeah, fair enough. Um, fair enough, but uh, I just come to the workshops. If, if you haven't already done them, Sean, just come along. Come along to the workshops. I think you'll, you'll be perfect on these, and they will really help uh, the, create the stability and the education. It's great to get a bit of education, because look, there are a lot of good intention people out there, okay? I have some relatives who work in the medical profession, and honestly, their intention, they do want to help people, and they're doing their best to help others. They really, really are. And I would never knock them for that. Uh, it's just, when you come across something that works on traditional, based on complete communication, works, you know, I mean, I've stuck with this for over 25 years for that simple reason. Uh, it's not that other things have, other people have done haven't helped them in some way. It's just, I have found this just bang on the button, you know? So thank you for that, Sean. It's great to have you here. Folks, I'll, I, I suppose we'll probably wrap up now. So for everybody who's left, uh, unless anybody has any other last minute questions that they want to slip in there, uh, please do. But um, for everybody who's left, thank you so much for staying with me right till the very end. I hope to see you all on Friday. I hope you have all enrolled. Um, so I'll say good night to you. Uh, Eric, for, for hosting. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Paul, Aileen, thank you Aileen, Sean, and thank you for your participation and all your comments, Sean, much appreciated, Lorna and Susan. Folks, I will say goodnight to you. The link is going to stay up there for another few minutes. Thank you all so much. Um, glad you liked it, Sean. Have a beautiful rest of your evening, and I'll see you all soon again. Bye.